So now let's talk about what happens in the last five or ten minutes of class. What happens when you have more than one lens? So with these equations and the interpretations that we have or the, or the different definitions that we have, you should be able to uh, calculate if you have an object and some optical element, what is the image of that object, right? So that will be the first level. But then the next level of complexity in this chapter is, can you do that for more than one optical element? Right, a combination of, say, a converging lens and a diverging lens. Each one with a different focal length, right? So let's say that this one has a focal length, a focal point here and here. And let's say that this one has a focal point here and here. So if the focal length of this optical element is say, for example, F2 is minus 10 centimeters, right? That means that each one of these focal points is a distance 10 meters from the uh, diverging lens, right? But when you're using the thin lens equation, do not forget the minus sign because that comes with being divergent. If you forget the minus sign, your equation, it's a, in your equation, you're using this as a converging lens. This will be obviously different. So now you have an object, you place your object somewhere over here, and you figure, and you're trying to figure out where, the, for the observer that is on this side, where is the image, where is that object gonna, gonna be? A lot of times it is obvious where the observer is, but sometimes there is a little bit of ambiguity there. Because in a problem like this, what if I say that the observer is here? Looking at in this direction. Would you bother with this? That's behind you. That cannot possibly affect where you see the image of this object, right? So it seems kind of obvious, but it isn't sometimes. In a problem like this, most of the time you would assume the observer is here, which means that the libraries are going to go through one thing, and then whatever happens to them, they're going to ha have to go through the other optical element. Two crossings of optical elements. And if you had a mirror, for example, that's when it starts getting tricky. Suppose this was a mirror, the library will cross one time through this thing, they will bounce off the mirror this way, and they could make it again one more time through the lens. So in that case, if the observer is here, you will have to do one crossing, one reflection, another crossing. Three calculations, right? But if the observer was here, you will do one, two, and you will be done. In a homework problem, you have a situation like that. A, I think it's a converging lens and a mirror, and the problem doesn't specify where is the observer. But the answer assumes that the observer is actually here, which is not obvious at all. I would have thought that it would be here normally. So I put a note there in your homework saying, the observer is here. Okay, so you're gonna do one crossing here and one reflection. Okay, so the general case is you just forget, the general strategy is you forget that there is this other lens for a minute, you do the calculation with one lens, you figure out where the image of this object is gonna be. This is a partial image, it's not the final answer to the problem. It's just step one in your problem, All right? So this is the image, let's say, of due to optical element one. So this image, the fact that there is an image here means that there is uh, light rays that are coming out like this. The cross at this point, the light rays coming from the tip. They went through the lens and they focus here, but after that point, the light rays are not gonna just stop there. Photons just keep going. So these libraries are now emerging or diverging on this side, right? They're coming, they're spreading out like that. So those libraries, some of them are gonna hit this mirror, um, a lens. Some of them are gonna hit that lens and they're gonna diverge. And for the observer on this side, that's 
the libraries that this observer is going to see. Those are the libraries that are going to go inside the, uh, the eyes of this person. So those libraries seem to be coming from not this direction. They seem to be coming from a different direction, right? So maybe they seem to be coming from here. So this is going to be your final image. To calculate the location of that final image, you have to go through the calculation of finding the intermediate image first using the thin lens equation or ray tracing if you want, depending on what you asked. You have to calculate the location of this image and then this image under optical element one becomes the object for the next calculation. Okay. What was the image for the optical element one is now the object of the second element. They're passing their images to the next element, right? So what is an image for one is now the object of the next one. In some problems with kinematics, for example, where, where there were different things happening to an object, you calculated the final velocity in this part of the trajectory, on this part of the problem, right? And that became the initial velocity for the next part, right? So it's the same thing here. Calculate that and use that as the object taking care of the rules about uh, the uh, positive distance of the image or not and positive or negative distance for the object. That, we'll do that next class.